Okay, well welcome to the simple tutorial in Creo Parametric 2.0 on how to use the pattern function. Um, now we're going to apply it to a simple wheel structure that we've built here, suitable for a standard wheel in the Formula One in schools program. It's a plastic ex um, injected mold wheel and we're going to create our own little version of this. And this could be 3D printed if you're involved in that activity. And what I've done here is just set up a, a small ellipse uh, and I've extruded that ellipse shape, elliptical shape, to create a sort of a pattern that I want to revolve around a central axis on the wheel. Now to do that I'm going to use the pattern shape but before um, I can do that I really probably have to re-extrude. The pattern shape's not available here at the moment and I'm going to extrude this shape again. So if I right mouse button click on the model tree on the shape there on the, the particular action that I've done. I can delete it if I choose. There it is there. And it'll ask me, do I want to delete it? Yes, I do. So that shape's gone. Now, my computer lags a little bit, so when I do this next little section here, I'm sure you're going to see some weird stuff on the screen. It will hopefully disappear. So let's do a sketch first, and I'll do the extrude section for you. What plane do I want to sketch on, Creo Ask me. If I hover with my mouse over the plane, it will let me do that and I can click on the highlighted sketch button here on my right. You can see the mouse hovering and I've got my crosshairs. Again I can use the orientate the sketch view. It'll orientate the sketching plane parallel to my screen. That suits me. Um, that's fine. I can do it like that a and you know, we'll see if this will work. But the other way of doing it is just to I prefer to sketch to see it sketching on the plane that I want to do closest to me. So that one there. Okay, um, let's do our ellipse. It's a two squashed edges if you like ellipse. That's how I think of it. I'm going to highlight the first one here with my mouse button, then drag it out, put the center one there, and then drag out the ellipse. Now, I'm sorry about all that mess that you see on the screen. It's a rather interesting pattern, but the snowstorm will disappear in a minute. There it goes. Now, I'm happy with that, that shape that I've created there, and I'm going to press OK. And I've just sketched that little that little circle. You notice that the pattern tool is now available for use. Well, I'm going to extrude it first, uh, the shape, and Creo tells me that I've got my extrude function set to remove material, which you can see up here when the mouse is hovering. If I clicked on this button here, I could change it to put material in and draw it out, but I don't want to. I'm going to click it to remove material. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the feature that I want to uh, create a geometric pattern with. So okay, that's all done. I'm going to click OK. Next thing is to use the pattern tool. There it is there. I'm hovering over with my mouse under editing and we're going to select geometry pattern because we want to create a geometric pattern that follows certain specific angles. So I left mouse button click it and I've got my menu bar at the top. Now the direction function over here I can push this pattern out into space in a straight line or I can uh, use it to follow a curve or I can move it about a point. I want to spin it about an axis. So I click on axis and then I'm going to select the, which axis Creo would like to know and I'm going to use this axis here which is the, um, the revolve, the axis about which I created the shape. I revolved it and I revolved it about this central axis. So I left mouse button select it and Creo's guessed that I want to create four different shapes defaulted to that and I want to spin them around in the direction that you see that red arrow moving, that red arrow there. I can change the direction if I wanted to just by clicking on the, the direction changing button here, flip direction, flip the angular direction of the pattern, but I'm happy with that. Uh, instead of using 4, I could change that to 10 or 12 or whatever I wanted to. Um, I'm going to be game here, I've tried this before and it hasn't been very pleased with my selections, but I'm going to try 12 not quite sure that I'm going to be very pleasantly surprised with this because I've had troubles with this in the past. Mm, not letting me select very well. So I'll, <laughs> I'll stick to this 4. Okay, so I'll stick to the 4 that it's chosen because I don't want to muck around. But you could type in 10 or 12 and your computer will hopefully behave a lot better, better than mine. And I want to spin them about the 360 degrees. Now I could choose whether I want the pattern to go 150 degrees, 180 degrees and so forth um, just by changing this uh, number up here, the number of degrees, but all the way around is what I want 
and once I've done that all I need to do is click OK and the pattern will regenerate in those various spots that I've chosen and I've now got a geometric pattern revolved about that center axis. Okay, now you can choose to do that on across a straight line, across a different surface if you wanted to, or about a point. And have fun with it, play around with it, and enjoy it. Okay, thank you very much.